Hello everyone, welcome to Study Hat. In today's video, we'll be learning about photosynthesis. The learning objectives for today's video would be to understand how and why photosynthesis takes place and to give examples of how animals obtain energy. So what is energy? What do you think energy is? Energy is the ability to do work. Very simple definition, a common question that comes up in exams, energy is the ability to do work. So energy for life processes. All living things need air, food and water to stay alive. The food provides living things with energy, which is important to carry out all life processes such as movement, respiration, growth and reproduction. So any process that you can think of, it requires energy and we get that energy from food. So how do animals obtain energy? Animals can't make their own food, so they need to get their energy by eating other plants or other animals. So a squirrel eats a nut, a bird eats a worm. All right. So we have plant and animal eaters. Animals that eat plants are called plant eaters. Animals that eat other animals are called animal eaters. And animals that eat both plants and other animals are called plant and animal eaters. So basically what they eat, you just add the eaters at the back. Okay. We humans are plant and animal eaters. So where do plants get their energy from? Plants are the only organisms in the world that make their own food. Plants are not like animals. They do not obtain food by eating. They make their own food through this process called photosynthesis. This unique ability to make food distinguishes plants from other groups of living things. So the leaf cells of a plant contain the cell parts called chloroplasts. Chlorophyll is what's found in the chloroplast and this is basically a green pigment. Only leaves and some green stems contain cells with chloroplast. Okay, and this is how plants can make food because they have chloroplasts which contain chlorophyll. So what is needed for photosynthesis? Chlorophyll in plants is needed because it traps the light energy from the sun. Plants cannot make food when there is no light, which is why photosynthesis only occurs during the day or when light is present. Two raw materials are also needed for photosynthesis. We need carbon dioxide. The leaves of the plants must take in carbon dioxide from the air through their stomata. So stomata are tiny openings and they are mainly found on the underside of the leaves. So this, they're more abundant on the underside of the leaves. So what is the other thing that's needed for photosynthesis? That will be water. And water is usually absorbed by the roots from the soil. So you need the light energy and you need water. Okay, and then within the leaves, especially on the underside, we have a lot of these tiny openings called stomata where carbon dioxide enters. Okay, and that's how photosynthesis occurs. So during photosynthesis itself, sugar is produced as food during photosynthesis. This chemical process has a byproduct that is extremely vital to all living things to stay alive and this is called oxygen. So the two things that are actually produced during photosynthesis would be sugar and oxygen. The term byproduct means a secondary product. Sugar is the primary product of photosynthesis. So what is photosynthesis? Is the process of making food. What is food? Food is sugar. So that's your main product that comes out of photosynthesis. The byproduct, which is the secondary product, would be oxygen. Excess food produced by the plant is stored as starch. So starch is also still made up of sugar, but it's in a different form called starch. So what is the equation for photosynthesis? This is going to be the equation that you have to memorize. But if you understand the process, this equation is easy to understand. Okay, so we have the carbon dioxide and water that we talked about. With light energy and chlorophyll gives you oxygen and sugar. So this is what is taken in by the plant. This is what's needed by the plant. And this is what's given out. So rate of photosynthesis. There are three factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis. The intensity of light, the amount of carbon dioxide, and the amount of chlorophyll. So with the intensity of light, the more intense the light is, the higher the rate of photosynthesis. Same applies for amount of carbon dioxide because we know that the plant takes in carbon dioxide. So the more there is, there'll be a higher rate of photosynthesis. Now, Alicia placed a boiling tube containing a water plant in front of a torch. She counted the number of air bubbles produced per unit time. She repeated the experiment by changing the distance between the lamp and the boiling tube. So the variable here is the distance. So before we proceed to the questions, what do you think the distance does in terms of rate of photosynthesis? So here, the distance actually correlates to the intensity of light. So the closer the test tube or the boiling tube is to the torch, the more intense the light would be. So now she plotted her results in a graph. Distance from lamb and number of bubbles. Why were air bubbles observed during the experiment? Okay, so first of all, let's go back to the diagram. When you have source of light and you have water and you have a water plant, 
what is the process that's occurring here? You're right, it's photosynthesis. And what is the byproduct of photosynthesis? Oxygen, right? And oxygen is a gas. So when you have gas in water, you will see air bubbles. So that's actually oxygen that's being released in the form of air bubbles. Part two, state the relationship between the intensity of light and the rate of photosynthesis. So as we spoke before, the higher the intensity of light, the higher the rate of photosynthesis, okay? Now, part three, explain your answer in B part two, okay? Which where we said the higher the intensity of light, the greater or the faster the rate of photosynthesis. So we can see that light energy is one of the important aspects of photosynthesis, right? It's something that's required for photosynthesis to occur. So when there's more of this factor, it drives this process forward, okay? So we have carbon dioxide and water, and with a lot more light energy, it drives it to produce more of these byproducts and products, all right? So that's why the greater the intensity of light, the greater the rate of photosynthesis. Now, it was observed that there were fewer submerged plants than floating plants in a pond. Suggest a reason for the observation. So pause this video and have a think. So first of all, just looking at this pond, you can see there's a lot of floating plants, correct? So there's a reason why there's a few were submerged plants, because the floating plants actually block the sunlight from entering, correct? So whatever plants that are submerged inside aren't going to be getting much sunlight because all of these floating plants are actually blocking the sunlight from entering, which is why plants that are submerged will not survive. They might have died off, they might have withered off. So this is the reason why the submerged plants are not as prevalent compared to the floating plants, okay? So that's the end of the lesson for today. Have a go at the quiz right after this so that you can consolidate whatever you've just learned. And I'll see you guys in the next video.